Melko England reads this minus 20 degree at highest point. Two scale minus 20 at height. 100 at steam. They now said calculate the degree Celsius equivalent corresponding to 70 degrees Celsius. So we are told to calculate degree Celsius equivalent corresponds to 70. Mind you, both is degree Celsius, but one is more specific and the other is what? Uh, ideal, an ideal equation, situation. What do you do? 70 minus, remember the minus 2, all over 100 minus minus 20. You are going to have x minus 0, all over 100 minus 0. And there you have 90. You know this is going to be plus over 120 equals x over 100. 0 cancels 0. So this is going to become x equals 90 times 10 all over 12. You have your 900 divided by 12. If you divide 10, 10 here, give you 90. 10 here, give 1.2. And this is, we got about the same 9. 12 over 1.2 will give you, um, you have um, in this is, that will be 9 divided by 1.2. That will be 9 exponential 10 uh, times 1 over, sorry. Let's put it this way, divided by 12 over 10. So from there, I'm going to have 9 times 10 times 10 over 12. So you're going to have um, 2 years 6, 2 years 5, 2 years 3, 2 years 5, 3 years 1, 3 years 1 point. You know, by the time you do your calculation, 1.67. So when you multiply this, so you have your value, your x value is 9 times 5 times 1.6. 9 times 5 is 45. Are we getting it? 9 times, 9 times 5, sorry. Uh, we have your 9 times 4, 36. 9 times 5 will be 45. Then 1.6. When you, when you multiply this by 1.6, you're going to have 0. You're going to have 3. You're going to have 24, 27. You're going to have 0 by 4. 0, 0. This will give you 12, carry 1, 6, 7, 72. So the value of your x is 72. Sorry, it means Qatar degree Celsius. Just locate it from here. Gas laws. Now, at this junction, you know, from your elementary chemistry, we know that gas laws uh, involves your Boyle's law, your Boyle's law, Charles law, um, Gay Lizard's law. You know, we did all this in chemistry. You must have done all this in chemistry. Then I don't recall um, Dalton's law of partial pressure. Partial pressure. These are laws that are still valid up to this moment. But at this juncture, we'll be looking at those that are relevant to the knowledge of physics. So, in order to truly study behavior of gases, three quantities must be put into consideration. So, for us to actually um, study these laws properly, we're looking at three properties. We have what we call pressure, we have what we call volume, and the last one, which is your what? Temperature. So, these are the three things, properties that are... Now, in measuring the gas pressure, now at this stage, you understand? Now, at this junction, some two different liquids can be put into this same liquid, or even three, I have something like this. You can also have something like this. Uh, let me put it this way, so that they will look different. So, here we can have one liquid, here we can have another set of liquid, here we can have another set of liquid. They are all, they are all um, apparatus used to actually measure pressure, you understand, of gases with respect to atmospheric pressure. So these are the major tubes that are being used. So in this case, now if you put, let's say, what you have here is mercury, 
HG, where you have here is H2, and probably where you have here is, um, you know, then let us even use H2. We can have, uh, can have your benzene or something, you know, a polar solvent, sharp. You know, when you say polar solvent, you can have a polar solvent here, a mercury, and another uh, liquid substance here. Now, the movement of those gaseous, I mean, those liquids, we just went to the quantity of gas that comes in to determine how the pressure of those gases are actually measured based on the diagram we have something like this now that there is an higher height here that's h are you seeing it so from here we have what we call here we have what we call the reference fluid you know now it's located inside here that's the reference fluid now up here is what we call atmospheric pressure that's your peanut then here we have an unknown pressure. So P naught is the I mean this is ATM and this is your P naught. That's the unknown pressure. That's the atmospheric pressure. So from there we'll be able to proceed. So while we continue the explanation, you'll be able to understand what is meant by your gas pressure measuring instrument. Now in the measuring of gas pressure using the manometer, the tap of the gas supply is turned on. As the gas rushes out, it exerts pressure on the what gas B. You understand which forces the level of mercury in A, that is the open tube to rise onto level A. Let's say this is level A, this is level B. Now, this is the one that is actually exposed to the top of gas. Now, a gas is, a, it is actually inputted, inputted here. This is A. Now, the gas is come in here. Now, the level of rise goes this way. Now, let's say let's, let's use this as A, that it will correlate with that statement. This is B, this is A. Now, when the gas comes in through this bit, level, the level of A rises above that of B because the pressure will move the what? The remaining liquid. So, this pressure will move it down and this goes up. And from there, so many um, differences in height will be what? Obtained. Now, if we proceed, this now, so when the level of both A and B are steady with the pressure P of the gas at B, do you understand? Now, we'll be able to have this, this initial height. So, by the time this is the initial. So by the time the pressure forces in, probably the, the level comes to this part. You understand? So you have another height, H. That's the big H. So at this level, you'll be able to now obtain um, two major heights. That is H plus the small H. You understand? Or we can put it this way. Another H. So from there, you'll be able to have um, total height. So from there, you'll be able to have two heights being added together. Now, if we proceed, this is true because since pressure increases with depth, pressure at B will be greater than that of A by a value of each centimeter. So the pressure here, because this is where the what the whole pressure is being pulled. Pressure here will be greater than the pressure here. Now, if we are to now to, we need to now de derive. We need to derive a standard atmospheric pressure. We must know how to derive a standard atmospheric pressure. The value of pressure is given as P equals F over E. Noted. Now, our force is given as Mg over E. I mean, as an Mg. Are you getting it? Now, if you now want to break this down, you now realize that your rho G, rho G A, remember we said this is mass and this is gravity and this is acceleration. By the time you break them down one after the other, you realize that the same thing as rho, from here you have rho v g. How do we get rho v g? I'm going to break it down here. Okay, we have mass. Remember that density equals mass over volume. So from here, your mass equals rho v. So if you input this in here, are we getting it? You will be able to have this here. So you have your g. Are we seeing it? So from here, you remember that your volume can be broken down to what? A dot H G. What do I mean? Volume is same thing as length times breadth times height. So length times breadth is area times height. So we can say your area times height can come in place of your V A. So from here you can cancel your 2 A. So therefore your normal pressure is given at rho H G. This is the derivation of what? Your uh, standard atmospheric area. So at this junction now, we'll be able to derive the actual pressure of, I mean the actual standard pressure by inputting the densities here. Number one, we need to know the height 
the height of um, the height of that mercury value is 76 centimeter mercury. You need to know the um, gravity. As a is gravity is 9.8, and the one density density of mercury is what 13,600 kilometer kilometer. I mean um, kilogram per meter cube. That's the density of what mercury. I mean that's the density of mercury. That's 13,000. 600 height is 76.00 centimeter mercury while your acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 so if you input this three into this particular formula you have your pressure to give you as 1.0 1 1.013 exponential exponential 5 in your newton per meter square so that's the standard uh, pressure value you understand that's your standard atmospheric pressure. So if we proceed, we will start with Boyle's law. We will start with Boyle's law. You know, for us to actually calculate Boyle's law, what does Boyle's law say? Boyle's law says that the volume or the fixed mass of the gas varies inversely as its pressure, provided that your temperature is constant. Very simple. What do you do? We write out the equation first. So it's a common equation now. Write out the equation first. That is. Uh, P is inverse proportional assault volume. So from there you're gonna have P1 V1 equals P2 V2. This is just the fundamental formula. And um, maybe you have this. Let's now look at you'll be able to solve um, any question relating to Boyle's law. Let's now look at its application. It is employed in determining the volume of a gas of a given mass of a gas at constant temperature. Number two, it is also used in finding the pressure of a given mass of gas at constant temperature when volume is known. Do you understand? Now, the graphical representation of what? Boyle's law goes this way. Pressure is the